the loss of life in Ukraine and that missile strike that hit a TV tower in the capital of Kyiv, the site of a Holocaust memorial. And in Kharkiv, several missile strikes reported there, Ukraine's second largest city, a residential apartment and an administrative building, the targets. Joining us now with the very latest, Aaron Katursky is in Ukraine, Phil Lipoff in Poland. Aaron, let's start with you. What more can you tell us about these recent missile attacks? I think taken together, they signal a willingness uh, on the part of the Russians to be more aggressive after perhaps suffering uh, some setbacks in the early part of the invasion that didn't quite go the way maybe President Putin had planned. And if they're shifting to heavy artillery and to cluster munitions, as the Ukrainians have alleged, although hasn't been independently confirmed, uh, that does suggest that civilians are going to be more at risk here as the invasion wears on. It's now dark. Uh, and and with darkness comes uh, another unsettled night already with the attack on the on the TV and radio tower that sits near Babiar, the, the site where more than 30,000 Jews were slaughtered during the Holocaust in 1941. Uh, that, that's an evocative site. It's a strategic t site, perhaps, for the Russians, but, but evocative because, remember, President Putin has said part of his goal here is denazification, uh, an evocative term uh, on which to, to base his invasion. Yep, targeting a symbolic site indeed. And President Zelensky, Aaron, has become a sort of iconic figure now of the Ukrainian resistance. He spoke with President Biden today, within the past hour, made that emotional plea to the EU parliament. What does he need at this hour? Well, he says he needs everything. You know, he needs military aid, he needs humanitarian aid, uh, and, and he needs, uh, well, he, I mean, he could use boots on the ground. That's not going to happen from, from any ally at this point, since that just wouldn't be possible without probably starting World War III. So he knows that Ukraine is, is on its own, and he's done his best, as you say, to rally citizens to the cause, and they've responded. I mean, he was elected back in 2019 with a significant majority, but almost by default, since most of his competitors were mired in corruption scandals. But he's really acquitted himself well, even absent any kind of a political background, to, uh, to, to show up, get on TV, get on the Internet, in combat fatigues, and, and, and rally Ukrainians to their own defense. But he also needs to find a way in, in theory to the negotiating table because, he, as he has said, he's target number one if the Russians are ultimately successful in coming into Kyiv and capturing him, uh, they could kill him. And, and so, the, you know, the outcome for him is, is quite grim, even though so far the Ukrainian resistance has held its own. And on top of that, Aaron, he says he's not going to leave his people either. And then, Phil, you've got the displacement of more than 600,000 people now that, I mean, the tremendous impact here in the weeks and months to come, it's so hard to fathom when you see them trying to even cross the border. I mean, as you reported, 60 hours in the cold trying to get across. I mean, what are the other obstacles ahead for these families? Well, besides getting across the border, as you point out, Kira, being 60 hours, days at a time right now, the biggest obstacle is going to be the number you talked about, 667,000. I believe the number was that number is going to grow and it's going to grow by the day exponentially the more heavy artillery as Aaron talks about that the Russians begin to use here uh, and reports of cluster munition the, the more that happens the more people are going to feel the need to flee already hundreds and hundreds of thousands of people have uh, but it's going to be a sheer number thing uh, the Ukrainians are going across the border into countries that are welcoming them uh, no more so than Poland hundreds of thousands of Ukrainians have come here and they are being welcomed, uh, but that's hundreds of thousands. It's not millions. So I think the biggest obstacle is going to be uh, that number and how it grows, Kira. And you've talked about half of these uh, hundreds of thousands of people that are fleeing are children. You've talked to the moms. You've talked to the kids. You've talked to the families. What's your sense of, of what these kids are going through and how, how are they experiencing this? Oh, boy. Um, well, you have kids. I have kids. We know how uh, children experience things, but uh, this is trauma. So this is how this is how kids deal with trauma. These these mothers that I'm speaking to are so so incredibly brave, uh, leaving home, uh, leaving their husbands behind to fight, taking their kids to 
see, see some of the pictures. It's, it's heartbreaking. It, they're kids with, you know, the cute little hats on, and they all have their favorite toys and stuffed animals, and it's as normal as it can be. That's a, it's an interesting thing to say. It's as normal as it can be for these kids, and it's because of the moms. The moms are making it as normal as possible, but they see kids can can sense how their parents feel. They can see the sadness in their mom's eyes. This, this woman, Olia, who we spoke to as two kids, and as she was crying and talking to us, I saw her daughter, Ariana, looking up at her. And you know, when, when a three-year-old girl looks up and sees her mom crying, you know, that, that lasts and it hurts. So th these kids are internalizing this, I guess I'd say, Kira. They're, they're definitely internalizing it. And it's a trauma. Well I know we are going to hear more of their story uh, coming up at the, the end of the hour, and, and they're such important voices. Phil, it puts faces to this conflict, which is what we can't get enough of. It just personalizes it and humanizes it. Aaron Katursky, Phil Lipoff, thank you, gentlemen, so much. Hi, everyone. George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.